Some footage in this video is from players around the community. Their links will be in the description of this video, as well as the music too. You have four days left to check out the merch we did with all the Leviathan raid bosses in collaboration with Champion. Check it out if you guys are interested. I'll put a link in the description and enjoy the video, guys. You've heard some of the opinions on Beyond Light, like critics and other YouTubers and streamers. You've heard from your friends to either uninstall or slap that install button. But are those people just being stupid to call this DLC the best since Forsaken? Are people even dumber for calling it the worst ever made? It's time to hear it from a real gamer now. Someone who's seen Bungie's releases since the beginning of Destiny's beta and knows all the little tricks of the trade by now, so they can't pull anything by me. So... It's actually pretty good. It's a buggy and busted mess. But it's pretty good. Beyond Light came out two days ago and you had your typical Destiny stuff for a new expansion release. New level grinds, some new exotics, some new abilities, more weapons and armor, and of course, the three hour wait at the oh. login screen. First thing we gotta talk about is Europa, which is pretty damn massive and filled with some cool stuff to do and secrets, which I'm sure I'm not even close to discovering nearly all of them. I love the weather system here, but at least so far it doesn't really go deeper than pushing me while I'm driving on my Sparrow. But you know what? It's a step in the right direction. Story-wise, there's a heavy, and I mean heavy, emphasis on trying to get a cohesive narrative that everyone can understand while still doing that Destiny thing of telling and not showing. I like these cool cutscenes with animations going wild, almost like a comic book with the normal high-quality cutscenes spread out too. I think the cast Aramis has is cool and all, and reminds me so much of the Forsaken Adventures of chasing down the Scorn bosses, but this time really feels like they have some motivation fighting for someone or a cause, right? Like I said, there's a lot of tell not show, but also a lot of show not tell. It's like a weird mix. One moment there's a beautiful cutscene of Varric showing us the pain the Fallen suffered. The next moment Aramis is breaking down in a random voice line on our walkie talkie why they're called the Fallen. We're fallen because Elixir like you never proved we could stand up. To humanity, we were always weak, always doomed. It's just odd. Like I said though, story-wise, this feels like the biggest focus I've ever seen and not the classic watch a bike video or go to a website and read the lore, lol. That feeling is just annoying and I'm happy that they're finally doing something about that. Also, it helps that if you jump from mission to mission, the campaign is actually hard. Wow. Challenging content in Destiny actually makes it more impactful and fun? Crazy concept. Without going too far into spoilers, I have a feeling this will be a Taken King-like finale if you're picking up what I'm putting down. Now, let's talk about Stasis. Damn, man. I don't think I've smiled like a kid using just abilities and destiny in a long, long time. It bangs. Definitely see why there was a huge focus on stasis with this expansion. Speaking of stasis, one of my biggest contingencies for this DLC being replayable was going to come down to how this subclass worked and how the aspect and fragment grind would be. I told everyone on stream so many times that the biggest potential comes down to aspects, which are basically just armor piece exotic abilities if you think about it. But seeing of how much of a grind it is to get these, for me personally, I love it. It gave me that holy shit there's so much to do feeling again for really the first time since Forsaken. I know it's not for everybody, I know some people aren't going to like it, but for me, I love it. There's still so much to see with it too, and over time we'll have to see how it plays out. Remember this is very early on, so I'm trying to keep myself grounded on it, but so far, really really loving Stasis. Speaking of Stasis even more though, Let's check in on our good friends at PvP. Shot this, the shot that. What about the crucible? Doesn't even miss through flinch. And Ace is supposed to like a truck. Oh, wow. oh. Last one is down by like a spawn staircase. Like, yeah, good luck hitting this, bud. <laughs> oh, the tracking! Are you kidding me? <laughs> the tracking! 
<laughs> What's up, fella? <laughs> All right, good thing mountaintop and PVP sandbox changes were made for stasis abilities to come in here and absolutely wipe the floor with everything. I actually cannot believe how stasis made it to PVP in this state. It is, oh, it is, it, it, it is, it is bad. They're hot fixing it. Nice. How did it even make it in live? How sweet guys. They're hot fixing it. Cool, that's awesome and all. How did it even make it to live servers? On the weapon and armor side of things, I feel like there's a lot of reactions and not a lot of substance. So let me just explain. I read a post on <clears throat> Reddit that said there was 98 new legendary slash exotics in Forsaken, while Beyond Light, as of right now, has about 31. Look, guys, I see where you're coming from, and I agree it's a lot less, but I also want to say that the new weapons are actually new and offer tons of new perks across the board. You gotta remember that Forsaken came off of the static roll and double primary system, while Beyond Light came off of retiring weapons. I would personally rather have 30 or so usable weapons that all feel new, than have 90 plus weapons that I will only use a small pool of them. You also gotta remember that in Forsaken, they did take a lot of year one weapons and just threw random rolls on it and called it brand new. So it's not like Forsaken did anything too, too new. But I do think it's dumb that there's no vendor refresh happening and even dumber that all vendors share the same ritual weapon, which is an actual reskin, and the same armor across the board with just different kinds of shaders on it. But I think over time, we'll see a lot more get filled in. And hey, I'm not too upset when the focus of the game seems to be shifting more into the ability MMO type with weapons and armor specking into abilities more so than abilities specking into weapons and armor. One thing that definitely still pisses me off, and I don't even know if it's an oversight anymore, is the leveling in this game. Someone tell me, with a brand new destination and tons of cool quests to do, why competitive is still the best place to gain levels after you hit the soft cap. Just entertain that one for a second. Seriously, why? I don't want to sweat my balls off in PvP when there's a place you spent a year making where I could gain those levels too. One of the other things that I noticed is that there's also tons of bugs in the game on release, which is to be expected, but there's so, so many more than the normal amount it feels like. Out of bounds areas are being found. People are already glitching into the raid. Exotics are completely not working. Old content just seems to be bugged across the board in weird, weird ways. Like I said, it feels like the bugs are a lot more than any other Destiny release, and I wonder if it has to do with them working from home and not in the actual studio. So on the bug side, I'll give them a complete break. I know everything will get sorted, but I mean, in some ways it's like, did anyone test some of this stuff? Was it the same people that tested PvP? Tell me, Luke. Tell me. I know this video is kind of all over the place, but it kind of matches the DLC too if you think about it. Europa is incredible, and the new abilities for that space and all the new places in the game are absolutely incredible. Just not for the old parts of the game. I will say booting up the game and just going place to place feels buttery smooth, and the UI changes and color changes to shaders and just the overall lighting are absolute money. The soundtrack? Oh my god, this one slaps. Props to the sound team. Everything sounds fantastic, especially the titty pump sound effect. You have to make use of what you got. The exotics are, well, weird. As far as I'm aware, none of them are random world drops, and so far, the gear is behind legendary lost sectors. But, they want you to beat them solo to get the exotics, which is making me scratch my head. On one hand, I like this because it allows you to be challenged and will reward players who put in the time and get the new exotics faster than people who want to take it kind of slower. But this is a team shooter. Like, it's not meant to be experienced solo, so putting exotics behind a solo reward just feels off for now. We'll just have to wait and see, though. 
I saw a lot of complaining that there weren't more stasis exotics and to that I ask why stasis is so different from everything else in the game it's physical not shield types if solar burned everything void black hold everything and arc shocked everything then I would agree with you but seeing how stasis operates it just doesn't make a ton of sense I'm sure we will see more stasis weapons in the future but for now I'm okay with just the one so guys that's pretty much my day one first impressions I think I made a potential mistake by making this video I usually let DLCs marinate and then talk about them from the overall perspective from beginning to end but for this one I wanted to get some extremely early impressions out there and try something new for the channel I know my opinions will change like how I think yours will over time too but I can't help but feel like this one I'll look back on with happy memories and not sad memories. I think I'll look back at this one and put it in the Taken King Rise of Iron Forsaken level instead of the Shadowkeep and Vanilla level. Overall, it's a good day for Destiny in my opinion, and I think you guys should check this one out for yourself. There's so much more I could talk about though, and I will always be down to talk about it on my Twitch channel at EvanF1997, where I have been streaming Beyond Light all the time, and I think you guys should check it out and hang out with me, man. Ask questions, just talk opinions on whatever. I feel like this video could have been hours long, but screw it, streams are hours long anyways. Anyways, dudes, if you did enjoy this video, a like would be greatly appreciated, as well as a subscription, and have a badass day. Peace out, everyone. Mmm. Goodbye. Free. Free. No. Free. I got free. Free. Free.